Hey y'all, Billy from Perma Pastures Farm. Beautiful day, the sun is finally shining. I think the first time in what seems like an eternity. But hey, it's shining and um, it's a day the Lord hath made and I will rejoice and be glad in it, no matter if it's shining or not. All right, here's a pretty cool video we got going today. And, as, and maybe you could probably hear it, but every single time we start to film, chickens start going crazy. It seems to be a crazy phenomenon all the way around. Anyway, it's 40 degrees up here in the mountains, but it feels considerably warmer, so I'm probably gonna come out of this. And the reason why, because of the altitude, lower humidity. So it makes it feel warmer than what it is. All right, here we are at the edge of my property. As you can see, there's a road over here. The food forest, you're seeing it at probably an angle you've never seen before. It comes down, hits the Hoogle Mound, and then into the Love Pond, and then finally, that culvert right here, and then then it leaves the property, okay? So we capture that water as many times as we can. This has been inspired from um, a project that I'm working on with Homestead for a Living, along with myself. And we're gonna bring it out, hopefully before too long. But it has to do with gorilla gardening. Now, all the videos you've seen me do in the past, it was always at a remote location, out and about. But can you do it at your own place? Because I have been. And I'm gonna show you the next stage in it. We briefly talked about it before, but we're gonna talk about it some more. Now, whether you live in the country, in most cases, or whether you live in the city or the suburbs, it doesn't matter. You probably have some easement there, okay? So let's say you're living in a small patch. Even if you're living in a large patch like we do, you can still do this stuff everywhere and every single aspect of this property, whether it's over here where we're working on, and I'm, we're not, we can't show you that right now, but where we're working on things like silvopasture, whether it's swales, whether it's all these things and how they work together. Well, gorilla gardening is no different. Here we got this apple tree, one of my favorite. In fact, the best of all time in my view, this is a ever crisp apple. But you'll notice it's not on my property. It's on easement. Okay, so ask yourself, how many easements out there where the government is supposed to look after and they don't, or they don't do it very often? Maybe you maintain it like I do. So they have no impetus to come in here and mow things down. Because if you look over here across the street, what they'll do periodically is they'll run through with these mowers that sit on tractors. And they can articulate these things sometimes and knock out some of the trees that may be getting into the road. Well, if you keep it down, they will drive by, at least where I live, and it's probably the same place where you live. The thing is, okay, look, I know there's some great government workers out there, but I used to be one myself, and they're not gonna go out of their way to do more if they don't have to. I'm gonna show you how we get around that. All right, here we are in another spot that's still, right here is my fence, okay? And so technically, I'm on an easement. Obviously, there's a road. Well, what we've noticed is that when they come by and mow, if I keep this maintained, they won't mess with it. So if you're wondering, okay, do I have property I can work with? Well, here's a prime example why. In permaculture, it's not just about producing enough food for us, but it's also for, you know, the environment, also for maybe, remember there's earth care, people care, and the abundance given to the previous two, at least how we see that third ethic. Well, this is on the outside of my property. And this is meant for any passers-by to be able to help themselves. Plus, I mean, it was also solving a problem for me. I have way too many trees and stuff, and I didn't have places up the driveway where I'm currently running the orchard to be able to put them. So I'm thinking, okay, why well, not do some gorilla gardening on property that isn't mine? So over here, I'm not gonna be able to show you, there's an Anacovia apple right up here. On the other side, American chestnut. It seems to be doing quite well. Um, we can go over here and take a look at it. Here's the apple. Do some of the deadfall that was already down here. Um, looks like it's gonna work out. Um, over here is an American chestnut, and I got it higher in the landscape because the sun tracks across the sky like so. So if this thing grows up, and it looks like it's doing okay so far, it's gonna be a very big tree, and it's gonna be around for a long, long time. These trees are on the bottom side of it, basically on the south side of it, okay? So what I got also down here are more apple trees. Well, you might be saying at the same time, well, hang on, man, this ain't no permaculture orchard. Yes and no. The issue I'm dealing with is because it is property that is not mine, officially, um, I can't do it 
to the intensity that I would a permaculture orchard or a food forest because it has to look somewhat clean for the powers that shouldn't be, okay? So the best I can do in a situation like this is what I've already done. I went back, put down cardboard, got these in, put in my daffodils, put in the garlic, put in the guild basically around here and put deadfall around it because it was already laying here. But I also need to do things that are also going to help it out. So I'm trying to find that happy spot between being clean enough to where nobody's going to feel the compulsion to want to come over here and mow it down. And also I need to provide that permaculture element. So today what I'm going to do, got an apple here and I've also broken a few other rules too. I got one, two, three, four, five cultivars of the same. No go in a regular environment but I'm gonna do something very different. And this is also something of a demonstration site. So basically we got a mini apple orchard on the front of the property that isn't even mine. So here's what I'm gonna to do today. I'm gonna come back over here and I got a nitrogen fixer. It's a different one. I don't think you've ever seen me plant this before, but I'm gonna put it in the ground today and I'm gonna show exactly if you can't do everything all at once, okay? Do it in pieces with the expectation that you're going to come back later on and add to it. Well, what I'm doing today is I'm going to put in a nitrogen fixer. And then later on when I'm able, I'm going to add more. Now that nitrogen fixer, it's going to be a false indigo. Now what I've done up the, what I've done in other examples is where I will literally stick it in the same mulch ring as my productive tree with the expectation that I'll come back later on and coppice it every time I need to. I'm not going to be doing that this time. This is actually going to be standing maybe right about here or I might decide to put it over there. Either way, it's gonna have spacing in there to show the order that the city wants to see, or not the city, but the county wants to see, but also providing that element of nitrogen fixation that I want this tree to do. Take that atmospheric nitrogen, put it down in the soil for the benefit of these trees. All right, over here we got an apple. Over here we got an apple. And right in between them is where this false indigo is going to go. Now, I've got nothing more than a shovel and cardboard. Now, unlike a typical productive tree, unlike that tree, I don't have to give it anywhere near the TLC that you have to, you know, this tree is not going to require any of that. And here's that little trick I got from Stefan Subkoviak, permaculture orchard guy. You've heard me talk about him numerous times. Is use your cardboard that you're going to use to mulch as a means to put your soil, okay? Now, having dealt with these nitrogen fixers, I know that I don't have to go anywhere. It requires nowhere near the care of planting. So I'm gonna take this, mix that up a little bit, maybe get a little bit more out of that hole. This one here on the way home got a little jacked up. So not, not quite root bound, but it's getting there. All right. So this here's a little tag. We're just going to move it up. Now, unlike your productive trees or, well, they're all productive. I really ought to quit saying that. Unlike the other trees you deal with, most of your nitrogen fixers require nowhere near the TLC. Now this is a false indigo. So be warned that certain grazing animals that you may have are probably going to want to eat it if you have it in close proximity to them. Um, is it gonna kill them? Some people will say, yeah, but I'll say this again, and I gotta do this as a disclaimer in today's litigious society, is I have never seen an animal eat something to the point it kills it when they had availability of things that it could eat. So there's your disclaimer. All right, so I'm gonna basically get this in the ground. And like I said, I don't have to necessarily follow all the rules that I would when dealing with a productive tree. So I'll get this in here, stick it a little bit high. Now keep in mind also, y'all, when you do this sort of thing, when you're out there doing this gorilla gardening and you're looking for all these different ways in which you can make it happen and in places you can make it happen. Remember, when you're, this is a big thing here. If you're working on property that isn't yours, and you have the potential of being able to work with somebody whose property it is, if this is one of the things you're doing, make sure when you sell this to them, you constantly tell them how they benefit, okay? You constantly tell them how they benefit. 
So here it is, that was that grass. I'm gonna turn it upside down. Another little trick from Mr. Subkoviak. And here's the cool thing is that when you're all done, you didn't get all your soil lost down in the grass. How cool is that? Now, if this were a productive tree, you've seen me do it before. I'd put down manure, I'd put down cardboard, put down compost and put down mulch. When it's a nitrogen fixer like this, it's a very robust tree. It really doesn't require a whole lot of intervention, but I always do it anyway. And I'm gonna once again, show you this little trick I came up with a long time ago. All I'm gonna do is cut a Y in it, like so. And then it's going downhill like this. So I'll push that back, slip it around my tree. Just like that. So when the rain comes or whatever, let's say whatever, it's not just falling out. So I put the opening on the downhill side. So it's always stuck there. This has worked well for me for a long, long time. This is something I came up with a while back. All right, so all I'm gonna do at this point is go get the next thing I need. Let me go grab it. Well, these are some wood chips and I'm just gonna, here's a little thing I like to do. I'll kind of get it down like this. And then I'll just kind of walk it around and then drop it as I go on the top hill, on the, on the top side. Because it's easier to pull it down than try to pull it back up if I don't fall into all this. So all I do is just kind of situate it like so. Now y'all, everybody seems to think, and, I, and I'm probably as guilty because I should have been talking about this before. When you do guerrilla gardening, Everybody just thinks, for some reason, in terms of annuals, why not Gorilla Garden perennials? You get it in there, you look after it, you make sure it's what it ought to be, and then you can not only harvest for yourself, but the community around you, okay? So this could be a wildlife corridor, okay? If I wanted, and I'm not gonna do it, in fact, I'm, I still got one more thing I'm gonna do, this is a high wildlife corridor down here. And yeah, they can partake, you know, as long as they're not stepping over here and taking too much of mine. Now we do pr plan for that. We leave some back for nature, but think about those perennial crops you can be putting out there. I mean, could you do a gorilla blueberry garden? Yeah. Could you do a gorilla uh, orchard? Absolutely. But nobody ever talks about that. Why not? This is the gift that keeps on giving. Maybe not this in the form of you eating something off of it, but this is in support of the other trees that do. That is very important. So what happens? It grows up. It's in close enough proximity to this tree and that to where it shoots that nitrogen that it gets from the atmosphere, puts it down in the soil to the benefit of those trees around them. Here's what else it does. This and all the other nitrogen fixers around here tend to harbor the beneficial insects that protect your productive trees exactly the way it's almost like god knew what he was doing you think all right so one more thing and then we'll be on our way all right last couple of things i'm going to do i got some of my bone sauce here if you need some we got it at the website world's best deer and rabbit repellent got to be honest y'all because this stuff has been working so well we don't even um we took all of the tree guards off of our trees or at least we're in the process of getting it all done um, because that's how well it works. Now, this is a nitrogen fixer, okay? And typically, most people are not going to be worried too much about it. But I don't want anything messing around chewing on it while it's getting off and running. I'm also going to hit these productive trees with it as well. So I got these gloves on because, look, this stuff isn't caustic. It's not going to hurt you. It's all natural. All natural. Ain't going to hurt you in any kind of way, but honestly, you get it on you, you're going to smell it for a while, okay? Some people, the smell is very disgusting. To others, it isn't. Let me tell you how far I'm going to go out here because typically, whenever we put in an orchard or a food forest, it's going to, we're going to do everything we can to try to replicate nature and put all seven layers in there. Remember, I'm out here dealing with people that don't necessarily know what that is. Now, let me tell you this. First of all, Make as many allies and partners as you can, not only with the wildlife, but also with the people that are potentially mowing. When I see them, I guarantee you, I'm going to roll out here. I don't care who's on that tractor. I'm going to hand him a couple of things of honey. There's a reason we, we don't sell the honey. It's used for goodwill. It's good for, it's good for gifts. It's good for bartering. That's why we don't sell it. 
So when I see him or her, it's typically a guy, when I see him down here doing this thing or I see him alongside the road, I'm going to go up real quick, flag him down. Hey, thank you for your service. Thank you for what you're doing. My name is Billy. I own Perma Pastures Farm. When you come down here, man, I got these trees I'm really trying to save. Look, here's some honey. Can you make sure you not hit them now or forever? Believe me, they're going to want to work with you. Okay, how cool is that? But at the same time, I can't go crazy. So here's how far I'm going to go. I'll put, I'm not going to do it right now, but eventually I'll have a ring of daffodils. And I'm not going to worry so much about, not daffodils, of garlic. I'm not going to worry about the daffodils so much because I'm not really worried about pests messing with this tree. Because we've also noticed that, and I'm not prepared to say this for sure yet, but this stuff seems to be working on the voles as well. Um, and we're also bringing other allies to bear for that as well. But the only thing I'm going to do is that every maybe corner of this, I'm going to put in comfrey. Okay. I'm going to put it just on the outside of this mulch ring. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to add the other layers. It's just going to be this nitrogen fixer, comfrey, and that is it because I can't go crazy. Um, I got to be able to make sure. And in fact, I want this to be something that people that have never heard about permaculture can actually either walk by. There's a lot of cyclists out here. A lot of people that walk by, go for their walks. They come by, see these apples, they help themselves. And I'm not even done with the fruit trees that are going to be out here. I can put another line up here and also put some in between. That's exactly how it's going to work, y'all. So if you need bone sauce, if you need comfrey, go check us out at the website. You need a freeze dryer. EMP shield, it's all down below. Hey, y'all, hopefully this video has been a blessing to you. And remember, it's fall. It's that time of the year where you can be putting in tons and tons of trees. We always prefer to do it in the fall. Maybe where you live, it might even be winter. But take your time and do not only the gorilla gardening, but think about gorilla gardening with perennials. How cool is that, y'all? All right, y'all. Hopefully this was all a blessing to you. Till next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. And doing stuff like this really puts the exclamation point on it. All right, y'all. We'll see you next time.